this is a video about this um, sound card, which I got from eBay as faulty. It says no sound out. And um, to be completely honest with you, I have tested this already. Um, I think I found what's wrong with it. Um, I just decided to reenact <laughs> my process because I feel it's it's simple and interesting. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a Yamaha shape. Um, it says. Let me see if I can zoom it. YMF seven one nine E, and apparently the YMF seven one is quite popular. Uh, within the old Jan community. <laughs> um, so I basically found um, software from it, even um, something that someone has designed for YMF71 chips, because again, apparently it's quite popular. Um, so I have um, saved the software on a DVD, um, and thankfully I have a DVD player with um, IS, um, how's it called? Um, IDE, IDE connection, and it's I managed to make it work on the MS DOS, and it works. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, plug it up and see if it does anything. Uh, so I got the video card, sorry, uh, sound card, controller card, and video card. And this is my 486 motherboard. I thought. 486 maybe it's a little better than 386 in terms of compatibility I don't know it's more modern um, so yeah let's power it up and see what happens I hope you can see the monitor well, it's gonna be smallish but Okay, so the software comes up with this Tito's kick hast Yamaha Bay sound card setup program. It comes up with this um, error message, which I hope you've seen. It says, um, unable to basically connect to the board. And it says possible IO issue. You may remember that back in the days there was no plug and play. <laughs> so sometimes you had to go into the options and change the IO address, the DMA, the R I I R I R Q, never said that in English. And there's this little software, which is again, it's made by a um, fanboy, apparently, of this um, chips, uh, where you can change all the options. And, you know, I've been through all the options, well, all the options, all, all that I could do, and um, I, I couldn't get it working. It says it can't talk to the, um, to the chip. So... To be honest, there's very little, very few components on this board. I thought, Let, let's try and see if I can find anything. Um, and I, so I got my oscilloscope and I started probing. So let's do this now. Okay, let me try this setup, which is not easy because the mobile obviously is in front of me and um, the pins on the board here are quite small, um, but I have found the the pinout of this board and I I will try to superimpose it sorry if I kick the camera every now and then on the screen so you see what I'm doing um, what usually you check on it on a uh, chip or something you check the you check the power is coming uh, if there's a reset line, you check the reset line. Uh, you check the, the address lines and data lines are doing something. Uh, you check the sync is coming. Um, so let's start with power. And power should be... Oh, where is it? Power is... A V D D and D V D D. So A V D D. Where's the other one? A. Oh, we'll go. In the meantime. <laughs> A V. Sorry. A V. 
A, V, D, okay, this V, D, D, it's A and D. So A, V, D, D, now where is D, V, D, D? Oh, there it is. So num pin number one, which is top right here, it's gonna be our um, analog uh, voltage. Because this chip has like sound in, sound out, it deals with everything. It's just, as you can see, it's just this chip. Uh, this one is actually a small uh, power amplifier because by selecting these two jumpers, you can actually connect passive speakers, obviously small speakers, straight to the board. This is a very small amplifier. Uh, let me set this to, uh, yeah, one volt is fine. So I'm expecting, I don't know what kind of voltage is gonna be here. Let's have a look without shorting everything. It's absolutely nothing great. Interesting. Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, that's ABSS. Sorry, that's ground. So that's going to be pin two, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be a moment in the middle, so I want to make sure. That's going to be actually interesting, because if I short... Ah. Uh, let me do this. Let me power it off. Make sure I'm on the pin. There it is. As you can see in the scope, there are five point something volts. One, two, three, four, five. The noise you see is actually my Wi-Fi. I have um, um what is it called? Um, it, it's the one that goes on on mains and introduces that horrible noise when I'm scoping it. Uh, it also introduces noise on my radio. It's it's horrible. But anyways, so we've got five volts analog. So let's check the whatever voltage it is in digital, uh, which is DVDD, and it's oh, it's number sixty. It's in a horrible place. It's at the bottom here. Uh, I would never see that. <laughs> oh, it's just I don't want to short anything. Let's assume for the moment that we got voltage on. DVDD. Um, the next one is to check like um, a data line. So I have like um, A9, 10, and 11 at uh, 17, 18, and 19. So let me. 17, 18, 17, there it is. Okay, looking at the scope, I'm expecting some activity when I power it up now. There it is, that's a bit. You see, there is activity, so that means something's coming to the chip. It doesn't mean anything, and you should really, you know, check all of the address lines. But you know, at least you know that something's happening, and that, to be honest, it's the it's the address line, it's the bus basically. So you don't know whether that those signals are coming from the chip or arriving to the chip. So you just know there is some activity there. So the bus is shared uh, within all these components. So there's actually, there should be somewhere, it's called the chip select line. So basically imagine you have like 10 chips on the same bus and there's one signal, which is, uh, how can I say, activating one chip at a time. So basically I send, I'm sending five volts to this chip and this chip says, knows, all right, it's my time to send uh, my data on the bus and when it disables it says okay now I'm just listening I'm not I'm lifting my uh, my address lines because someone else is talking that's how a bus works roughly it's quite interesting actually um, right so the next thing that uh, you want to check could be the reset line which is pin 12 uh, reset lines um, I should check on the data sheet but usually you see that it changes. It either stays low and then it goes high or vice versa, or it pulses once, but it should do something. Uh, if it's always high or always low, 
that usually means that the chip is not resetting resetting for whatever reason and i guess this reset line is coming from the cpu or the motherboard somewhere so again this is number 12 number 12 10 11 12 okay again when i'm saying high and low high means five volts and low means zero volt so again now it's zero volt to power it up you're saying it is it's gone up and down for a moment okay that means the board is the the chip is being reset i'll do that again three two one go goes up and then goes down so i'm sure that if you check on the data sheet it probably says if, if, it was, if it was a problem it would probably stay high all the time five volts all the time that means the chip is not starting because it's not being reset okay so the next thing they usually check on a on a well this is kind of a small cpu so you want the next thing you want to check is the the clocks are coming now we've got two clocks here um one says 24.5 megahertz and one says 33.8 megahertz so i'm just uh, connecting my probe on the 24.5 uh, power it up and lo and behold you have a waveform and i don't know if you can see here it says 24.5 megahertz so that's working perfectly fine. I'm gonna break this hard drive, I know that. Um, let's do the same with this 33 megahertz. And not really. There's something happening, but that's not really, that's noise. So yeah, I knew about this. <laughs> so that was the last thing. Uh, so it looks like this 33 megahertz crystal is not working. And um, again, if you look at the pinouts, uh, you have um, two, four, sorry, four pins for um, the sink, or the clock actually, sorry. It's 51, 52, 53, 54, uh, X, 51 and 52 are for the 24 megahertz. Uh, 53, 54 are for the 33 megahertz. And uh, obviously, if one is not working, the chip is not working. So I, yeah, I mean, if you, you can see, actually, it goes up to um, what is that? 2.5 volts. So th this is my zero volts, and the trace is up to 2.5 volts. Now, if I, without shorting anything, if I go back to the 24 megahertz you see that it's actually 2.5 volts high so it gets that voltage but it doesn't oscillate it it's supposed to you know just doing this um so uh, again it's, uh, it's, it's i don't know much about those chips but it's not really rocket science i think um so it's uh, either it works or it doesn't especially if you have 2.5 volts input and and there's nothing happening so again I, i've ordered one and i'm curious to see what happens because um yeah at the beginning i didn't find i i checked on the schematics and i couldn't see uh any clocks going in so i thought well i don't know maybe that's for something else but there was another page which i missed and yes there is a 24 and 33 and lo and behold there is a 24 megahertz chip uh, chip crystal and the 33 megahertz crystal and the 33 doesn't work so yeah that's usually you know when i'm looking at those videos online um checking the clock checking the reset line checking the voltages that's basic stuff you know because um, obviously without those it won't work so yeah i guess the next video is going to be replacing the crystal and um and see if it works i'll be very very curious